guide dogs. Previously on the journey of a guide dog. We found out how our guide dogs spend their retirement after their working career. Our guide dog puppies start off with the guide dog mums in the home. They then transition to the homes of volunteer puppy raisers who help educate, socialise and bring up these young puppies into confident young adult dogs who then transition into training and they live at home with a volunteer fosterer while they learn all the skills that are required to be a guide dog. And then we partner them with people with sight loss. Then those dogs will work in the care of a guide dog owner before they're retired. We want all of our dogs to have a really good quality of life. So it's important that we understand them as dogs and then we will look to see where that dog is most suited. We're here to try and create wonderful guide dogs, but we can only produce confident, capable guide dogs if they're also happy and healthy so that they'll work and perform at their best. It doesn't matter whether that dog's a guide dog puppy, a guide dog mum or dad, a working guide dog, or even a dog that doesn't actually enter into partnership. There's times when we decide that this dog is not going to be a guide dog, not because we couldn't train that dog, it's that the dog won't be very happy as a guide dog and goes on and has a home as a pet dog or a buddy dog or a dog for a different assistance dog organisation. So it's important to us to really look after their needs no matter what role they're in. We use a framework called the Five Domains of Animal Welfare and they look at different elements of a dog's life. So one is nutrition, and it's important that our dogs have good nutrition, but it's not just about making sure they get a good quality diet, it's actually that they enjoy their food and we use the diet of the dog in order to enrich the dog's life. The next is environment. There are some dogs that really thrive in busy environments and other dogs would prefer a quieter home life and a quieter working life. So we make sure that we look at the dog as an individual and think, where's this dog going to be happiest? The next is health. And we make sure that right the way from birth to end of life, we're looking at that dog's health across the piece. And when we go into the vet surgery, you'll see how important that is that all of our dogs have the best possible health care. The next is behavioural interactions. And that's largely around the dog's relationship with the people in that dog's life. We use positive reinforcement training, which means you're constantly focused on the behaviours that you do want, and then you reward the dog for performing that behaviour. We use a little clicker, and we pair that unique sound with a food reward, so that we're always looking for the dog to make the right behavioural choices for us, which we can then mark and then we can reinforce. We really focus on the positive behaviours and building up that really strong human-dog relationship that we're looking for. And all of those four domains influence domain five, which is the dog's overall mental state. And it's important that we ask ourselves, is the dog fit well, in a good environment? Does the dog feel contented? We're proud of producing the dogs that we do because it is a special and a unique job. They have to guide safely across a variety of different environments. They have to ignore things in the environment that most other dogs would not ignore. It's not an easy job. And we have to make sure that the dogs that we provide to do that job are both capable of doing that job, but importantly, their welfare won't be compromised. We're not here to turn every dog into a guide dog. We're here to turn the best dogs into guide dogs and they're the ones that will perform really well, but also importantly, really enjoy their job as well. We're a people charity. We're here to help people with sight loss to live actively, independently and well. And we do that through the provision of a guide dog. A big part of what we do is making sure that we achieve that partnership between dogs and people. And when you're working in partnership, it means that there's always give and take. 
But overall, we're thinking, is this a good, strong, healthy relationship? And is that concept of partnership evident? The new vet practices within Reading and the National Centre will support the dog care teams around the entire country. We have up-to-date imaging and equipment and facilities to do surgery if required. Both centres we are seeing dogs that need sort of more in-depth examinations and investigations. The home vet will do the initial appointment and if they say this dog might need some x-rays or ultrasound that's when we'll bring the dog here. The vet treatments that we provide start from puppies when they're first leaving the guide dog mums. They go to our national centre at roughly seven weeks of age to have a health check, their first vaccination and flea and worming treatments before they go out to their puppy raisers who will then register with a vet that's local to them who provide the first point of call veterinary care during their first year of life. We normally recommend that puppy raisers are going in to the vets regularly just to help socialise the puppies but also to keep an eye on their weight. We will then often see the dogs before they come into training, either for neutering or some of the dogs have been identified as being potential guide dog mums and dads. So they will come in to have x-rays taken to screen for health conditions that we don't want to be passed on. As they come into training, we'll all have a minimum of a health check every six months. They get another veterinary examination before they qualify as a working guide dog. As the dog ages, so once they get to nine years and they're working, then they have more thorough enhanced health checks, so they're examined every three months. Once the dogs have retired, we will often still have an input into their health care so that we look after them right through their life from beginning to end. Guide dogs pay all veterinary costs, from puppy all the way through their working career. That's where the in-house clinics are quite nice as well because we can provide prompt treatment for the dogs that need it. I think our dogs are amazing. They really are life changers. When you have conversations with visually impaired people about the difference a dog makes to their independence and their confidence. And you can just feel how important and how well cared for they are. It's really nice to see and hear of that bond. So we just need to make sure that there are no underlying health problems and that we are looking after them in, in the very best way that we can. When we're working with our dogs, we operate with four guiding principles that we use across all life stages of dogs. And those four are really simple. It's knowing, managing, teaching, and partnering. So looking at knowing, this is about knowing the dog as a dog. And so we have to make sure that we treat and respect them for being the individual that they are. The next principle is managing. And this is all about managing the dog and managing the environment. So we aim to set the dog up for success. And this will help prevent the dog demonstrating behaviours we don't want. And it'll mean they're more likely to practise the behaviours that we do want. Then we're looking at teaching or training the behaviours that we want. And the bedrock of all of our teaching and training is positive reinforcement. And then lastly, we've got the principle of partnership. That's really important for us. We want the dog to be in partnership with people because if a dog from the earliest stage knows that people are positive, they'll be able to transition between puppy raiser to trainer and trainer to guide dog owner pretty seamlessly because they'll have built up trust and all of our handlers are following the same four guiding principles, it means that the dog can expect the same treatment no matter which home that dog is in at any particular time. We're constantly working with everybody that's involved with the dogs, whether it's our volunteers who do such amazing work for us, or our staff who actually train the dogs and then teach people how to work with the dogs. So we have to educate everybody of the newer approaches that we've got, help them to develop new skills, and so that they can be as good as they can be for their dog. I'm a sighted person. I don't really think anything of popping around to my corner shop and getting a pint of milk, or jumping in my car and going and visiting a friend. But if you're somebody that's got little or no sight, 
all of those everyday journeys become much more difficult and guide dogs just open those doors. I've never lost the absolute power of having a dog that connects with a person in such a strong emotional way. Being able to get up in the morning and go out of your front door with your best mate beside you. It's a unique bond. They're both looking out for each other and that's what the power of partnership's about. We've got such a strength in our volunteers who support us in fundraising, breeding and raising our puppies, that we're so pleased to have such support from the public to deliver our life-changing work. Just like we have changed a lot of what we do in terms of the way we train and raise our guide dogs, things are going to change in the future as well. Technology is changing all the time and it's offering absolutely amazing advantages to people with sight loss. But there will be something about never being able to replace a guide dog. A guide dog is special. A guide dog is about relationships. A guide dog is a friend beside you every step of the journey that you make. And I think that is the power of a guide dog. Guide Dogs.